On this week's scoreboard show, we'll take you around central and western Kansas for high school sports action. This week we'll be featuring golf action from the Ulysses Tournament, along with the 12-team Garden City Tennis Meet from this past Saturday. Plus, we'll be covering several soccer matchups, including one that went into an exciting overtime. All this, plus much more, including tonight's football action, coming up on this week's scoreboard show. Presentation of Scoreboard Show on Smoky Hills Public Television is brought to you in part by an underwriting grant from... From Rural Telephone and Next Tech, providing the region with telephone, internet, cable television, and wireless phone solutions, Rural Telephone and Next Tech proudly support public broadcasting and all ventures dedicated to improving Kansas communities. The T-Birds dream it, the sky is the limit, cloud is right along your way to your dream career. Come and see, 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 get on your way to what you want to be, Cloud County Community College, going anywhere starts here. Dove Chevrolet, Buick Cadillac. Providing sales, service, and genuine GM parts to the Golden Belt since 1957. Located at 4217 West 10th, right next to Brown's in Great Bend. Come see us. Welcome to this week's scoreboard show. I'm your host, Troy Waymaster. This past Tuesday, the Kansas High School Activities Association released the new classifications for the 2011 and 2012 season, along with the new football classifications for the 2012 and 2013, and also 2013 and 2014 school years. In the football classifications, we saw McPherson drop down from the 5A ranks to 4A. Joining them in the 4A ranks, it is Goodland coming from 3A. Other changes in 3A are Holcomb and Russell coming down from 4A while Salina Sacred Heart and the 2-1A power Pittsburgh St. Mary's Colgan made the move up. In the 2-1A classification, Smith Center makes their return with Republic County and Sterling. And also taking place next year, Rollins County and Satanta will make the move from 2-1A 11-man to 8-man competition. For a full list of the changes, you can follow the link on our homepage at scoreboardshow.tv. For now, let's take a look at the football scores from tonight's game.
Well, that was just some of the scores from tonight's football action. If you did not see your score of the game you attended tonight, well, be sure to give us a call with it. We'll be taking another look at the scores later on. Let's get things going this week with a little tennis action. The school board show traveled to Garden City last Saturday for the Lady Buffaloes Tennis Tournament held at the Grimsley Harmon Tennis Complex and Garden City Community College. Twelve teams participated including Great Bend, Dodge City, Scott City, Mead, Ulysses, Liberal, Cimarron, Hayes, Colby, Pratt, and Varsity and JV from Garden City. In number two singles, Hayes High's Shelby Dinkle worked her way through the bracket with victories over Dodge City's Laterra Handy. And Stephanie Langer of Great Bend to reach the championship versus Pratt's Adelaide Loomis, Shelby wins 8-5 for the number two singles title. Number one double semifinals featured the team of Bonnie McRae and Emily Weiss from Hayes versus Dodge City's Kelly Brower and Ashton Moore. The Lady Indians win 8-3 to, to advance to face the winner of the other semifinal, Pratt's Grace Fellholter and Danny Williams versus Great Bend's Brianna Schartz and Jamie McVeigh. Pratt wins 8-4 to, to reach the championship versus Hayes. The Lady Greenbacks take the number one doubles title 8-5. to five. Now for number one singles action. The semifinals featured Great Bend's Morgan Francis versus Meade's Bailey Overa. Morgan goes on to get the win 8-3 to move through the bracket. The other semifinal match had Pratt's Lauren McLean taking on Hannah Fawnensteel of Hayes. After a good match, Pratt wins in a tiebreaker 8-7 to move to the championship. Pratt goes on to win 8-5 over Great Bend for the singles title. Overall team scores had Pratt winning three out of the four divisions and taking first with 47 points. Hayes High finished second at 42 points. Great Bend was third with 36 points, followed by Garden City in fourth, Dodge City in fifth, and Meade finished in sixth place. Girls Golf on the Scoreboard Show is brought to you in part by... Dune and Peterbilt is a full-line dealer with a great lineup of new and used Peterbilt trucks. And there are some new but familiar faces in our service department. Dune and Peterbilt GMC, located at Highway 156 and 56, east of Great Bend. This week's golf action takes us out to Ulysses for an 18-hole tournament. At the end of the day, it was Megan Stewart of Garden City taking 10th with a 99. Coming in with a 97 on the day, it was Larissa Sager of Ulysses in 9th and Garden City's Audrey Gerber in 8th. One stroke under them, it was Evan Sumner of Liberal winning 7th place. Shooting a 95 for 6th place, it was Lindsey Bradstreet of Garden City. 4th and 5th places went to Syracuse golfers, Stephanie Gevin in 5th with a 94, and Madison Brown in 4th with a 92. 3rd place went to Colby's Kaylee Keck, who shot a 91 on the 18. 2nd place went to Kia Rash of Syracuse, who finished the day off with a 90. Then in 1st place, it was the host team's Maggie Coops, who shot 10 strokes less than 2nd place, coming in with an 80. Coops helped propel her team to 3rd place, Colby took 2nd in team action, and Syracuse clinched 1st by 41 strokes. Also competing in the tournament were golfers from Goodland, Holcomb, Lakin, and Hugoton. The Stockton Lady Tigers hosted a volleyball quad on Tuesday, featuring Mid-Continent League rivals and two top-ranked teams from this week's poll. First up was Plainville versus the number one ranking team in Class 2A, Smith Center. Smith Center dominated in the first set, winning 25-10. In the next set, the Lady Cardinals came out with a more aggressive play and had the lead 10-8. Then Smith Center came back and turned the score in their favor and went on to get the win 25-16. The next match had the host Stockton Lady Tigers facing the current number two ranked team in Class 2A, the Hill City Ringnecks. Hill City had little trouble and won the match 25-10 and 25-16. Plainville next faced the Hill City team. The Ringnecks go on to get the win to the match, 25-13 and 25-16. Smith Center went on to win their match over Stockton in two. Then the top two teams met on the court, Smith Center versus Hill City. Hill City wins the first set, 25-17. Smith Center comes back to even it up with the second set, 25-13, and forces a third set. In a close contest, Hill City comes out on top, 25-19 for the match win over Smith Center. The last match featured Plainville versus Stockton. The scores went back and forth with Stockton taking the first set 25-18. The Lady Cardinals tie it up with a 25-22 win in the second set. And in the third and deciding set, Stockton goes on to win 25-12. 
In the first game of this week's soccer action, we head to Garden City as they hosted Great Bend in a Western Athletic Conference game. Great Bend would get on the board early as Alexander Urias gets the goal 254 into the contest. These two teams had met earlier in the year with Great Bend coming out on top. With Great Bend up, Garden City would get a penalty kick and Juan Vicente would get the goal to tie it up. He would not be done there as he would go and lure out the Great Bend goalie and then knock it in for another Garden City goal. Garden City would hold the lead for the remainder of the half. Great Bend would attempt to gain the lead in the second half, but Alex Urias' shot on goal would be blocked. However, his teammate Jose Mijares would rebound and get the goal to tie it up with a little over 20 minutes left to play. Garden City would have a few attempts towards the end of the contest, but they could not find the back of the net, thus going into overtime. Great Bend out taking their time and pass it around as Alex Urias gets it a kick toward the unexpected goalie, and he finds the back of the net for the win. Great Bend wins 3-2 in overtime. Windy conditions prevailed as the Hayes High Indians hosted a Western Athletic Conference soccer match against the Liberal Redskins on Thursday. With just under eight minutes into the game, Liberal senior Eduardo Moreno shoots this one past the goalie against the North Wind to make the score Liberal 1, Hayes High 0. With the wind at their back, Hayes misses the scoring opportunity. Liberal's Eduardo Moreno scores his second goal on the day with this shot. Less than two minutes later, Liberal executes a corner kick that results in a header by Redskin senior Isai Gutierrez to make the score Liberal 3, Ace High 0. The Indians have a free kick, but it is well defended by Liberal. In the second period, both teams had scoring opportunities, but the ball never went into the net. Just under 1.30 left in the second period, Hayes goalie makes a stop but loses control of the ball, and the rebound is shot into the back of the net by Liberals' Isaac Gutierrez. The Redskins get the shutout final score, Liberal 4, Hayes high 0. The Thomas More Prep Marion Monarchs hosted the Panthers from Nickerson for a soccer match on Thursday. The Monarchs get on the scoreboard first with this shot into the net by senior Jason Nerala. The goals keep coming easy for TMP with a pass from Drew O'Brien. Robert Niosaba uses his footwork to get a shot into the net, making the score TMP 2, Nickerson 0. Following a corner kick, TMP's M Michael Gonzalez uses a header for another goal. Monarchs' Colby Shippers gets the assist for this goal by Eric Choi, making the score 4-0 in favor of TMP. Nickerson's goalie gets drawn out from the goal, enabling a shot from TMP freshman Lane Fisher to get into the net. The score at halftime is TMP 5, Nickerson 0, and the Panthers have yet to take a shot on goal. Drew O'Brien gets a shot into the net, making the score 6-0 in favor of the Monarchs. With under two minutes left in the match, Nickerson finally has an opportunity to score with this penalty kick by Brady Robers to stop the shutout. Final score, TMP 9, Nickerson 1. Yesterday's Nest City Invitational featured runners from Greeley County, Hill City, Palco, Scott City, and Oberlin, among others. It was warm and windy, but these young athletes were not going to let that stop them. Coming in first for the girls was Candy Schneider of Greeley County keeping a healthy gap between her and Jesse Rubbottom of Nest City. And Leslie Van Lonen of Hill City. Behind them was Taylor Gable of Nest City and Koryama Yanez of Greeley County. In team scores, Scott City came in third, Oberlin came in second, and Nest City took the gold. On to the boys, although they ran later, the conditions were much the same. Tyler Shields took first place for Oberlin. Then Joey Meyer took second place for Scott City. Ness City's Kyle Chavely took third. After him was Wyatt Beckman from Ness City, followed by Troy Weininger from Greeley County. In team scores, Greeley County took the gold, followed by Scott City in second, and Ness City in third. 
Well, Garden City, Ulysses, Stockton, Hayes, Ness City, and now we'll hit the football action from tonight. Casey will be in right after this short break to bring you highlights from tonight's football games. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Presentation of Scoreboard Show on Smoky Hills Public Television is brought to you in part by an underwriting grant from... Exhibit Customs does cars and trucks, wheels, tires, truck accessories, audio, video, subs and amps. It's not just the products they offer, it's the service behind the products. Get it tough, get it loud, get it mean, get it downright bad. Exhibit Customs, you're an individual, prove it. Bethany College is helping me begin my path in life. I'm a student whose professors get to know me. I'm an athlete competing for the Swede. And I'm a community member involved in something bigger than myself. Are you ready to explore your path? Welcome back. Welcome back. Well, whatever. It's Friday Night Football time right here on the Scoreboard Show, and we're going to jump into some district action right after this short break. And I mean it's short, so stick around a while, would you? We'll kick it off with the Chase Cats. Coming Football up. action on Scoreboard Show is brought to you in part by... Simpson Farm Enterprises of Ransom, Hayes, Great Bend, and Beloit, your local spray coop and Apache dealer. We come back to a game of keep away. Come on, son, just tackle her. Just kidding. Don't ever do that. Buckland Red Aces with the ball, and Isaac Vasquez has room to run, and he'll take it home for the Buckland score. And the scoring man, after a short breather, is going to kick off to the Chase Cats and Cole Brady finally gets the kickoff and he's going to bring it to the near sideline and he is following the blockers and he could go all the way and just like that the Chase Cats don't have to run very far for an answer with the score. Cats hoping to add another win to their three and one record. Blake DeMore under center pitches to Vasquez. Zach Overly gives him no chance, and Lucas Ingram helps finish off the tackle. Overly pitches to Bradley, takes it outside, first down and more. In fact, following these blockers all the way for the score. Next up, Lakeside Royalty, your king, Jacob Rush, and queen, Kristen Wagner. Bo, the money, run, Matt Schwab on the tackle. Alexander Rankin, he's going to toss to Trevor Winkle. He turns up the gas, and it is a night touchdown on homecoming night for Lakeside. Clifton Clyde losing the ball here, and where is it at? Miles Thomas has it. He recovers and gets a defensive touchdown. I call that a pickup six. Rankin, pass. Nowhere to go. Well, he's going to run with it. And he gets a stiff arm there, one there, and Logan Newell finally stops this run. And bad snap, good recovery, still lakeside ball. Bo to money, holy fast, and it is another night touchdown as he takes it to the house. Buckland 24, Chase 74, that was the wrong score. The Wheatland Grinnell Thunderhawks, Greeley County with the ball, shotgun A.J. Cobert first down. For Devin Langdon, tackled by Zach Raymer. Wow, what an option. But Isaiah Stone somehow finds it in a host of Hawks on the tackle. Austin Beckman gets it up the middle, and that is a touchdown for Clifton Clyde. Toss right, hit hard by Stone. Is Stone by Raymer. Ty Kaiser, few good yards on the run. Elijah Stone on the tackle. Here comes Beckman. There goes Beckman, touchdown Thunderhawks. Deep shotgun for the Jackrabbits. Cesar Yanez is open in the middle, Wade Buck on the tackle. Bixenman on the keeper, and he's going to get a first down. Right here, Yanez on the tackle. Second down, Bixman to Reamer. First down and goal. Up the middle, touchdown Will Bixman. Covert to pass, deep, and Isaiah Stone, he's going to break the coverage, touchdown. And we are going to head now to Great Bend as they host Dodge City in a league game. Mitch Cottis 
tries to option, but Dodge City's Matt Schweiss says otherwise and gets the recovery. Cottis sweep left. First down, and he's finally tackled in the secondary by Trey Hallman. Josh Lopez takes the handoff. Breaking tackles, following the blockers, and finally, Schneiss brings him down on the tackle. Lopez again. And a demon comes across the field for the tackle. And more Lopez. And touchdown Lopez for the Panthers. Taylor Murphy back to pass. And he's sacked by Chad Towsley, who gets around unblocked. Murphy pass attempt, tip drill. Towsley finds corner. Connor Sell for the assist and the interception. Nope, it's still demon football. Murphy pass. And what a nice triple coverage catch by Trey Holman. Parker Davis outside, and Matt Marshall knocks the ball loose, and the Panthers seem to have the ball. Great Bend, 35, Dodge City, seven. Off to Victoria. Corey Dinkle, keeper for the Victoria Knights. Tracy Archer on the tackle for the Logan Trojans. Dinkle, no pass, nowhere to go, and he takes it up for a first and goal. Dalton Dryling is going to finish off the drive. Touchdown, Knights. Archer on the carry, and Dryling runs him down and gets the tackle. Clayton Roth gets the carry. Hard running, and he's just tripped up after a sweet game. Dinkle going to sweep it outside. Second and goal, and Dinkle gets the score. Sam Otley playing quarterback pass to Tanner Hobbs with a nice grab almost to the 10-yard line. Otley will keep it and put more points on the board for the Victoria Knights. And we go back to Dinkle. Option to Dryling. Good blocking and an extra stiff arm and Dryling is out of bounds. Off we go to Ellis where it's homecoming night and the Raiders looking for their first win. Riley Hunseeker is going to keep it. And I don't know how Hunsaker gets away from all these tackles, but he does, and this is a great run. And yes, he is going to score and feel like a king on homecoming night. The Rawlings County Buffaloes, Gale Skull out on the carry, Cole Pfeiffer on the tackle. Back to Ellis. Hunsaker going to run outside, and he again is outrunning the defense. Touchdown, Railers. Boom, chest bump, Dylan Timar to pass. Holy nice grab by Michael Capo. Neil Potschke is going to take it all the way for the Riley County Buffalo. Rollins County trying to make a, to make a play, an onside kick, and it is recovered by the Buffaloes. And Rollins County trying to make a play here. Fumble, Ellis Ball. And Ellis gets their first score on homecoming night, 40 to 19. And here's some scores from your area.
presentation of Scoreboard Show on Smoky Hills Public Television is brought to you in part by an underwriting grant from... From Roll Telephone and Next Tech, providing the region with telephone, internet, cable television, and wireless phone solutions, Roll Telephone and Next Tech proudly support public broadcasting and all ventures dedicated to improving Kansas communities. The T-Bird stream it, the sky is the limit, cloud is right along your way to your dream career. Come and see, 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 get on your way to what you want to be, Cloud County Community College, going anywhere starts here. Dove Chevrolet Buick Cadillac, providing sales, service, and genuine GM parts to the Golden Belt since 1957. Located at 4217 West 10th, right next to Brahms in Great Bend. Come see us. Week 5 is in the books and we'll start heading out for next week's show. Where are we going to be for next week's show? Well, you can find out by following us on Twitter or checking out our website at scoreboardshow.tv. Until next time, remember to put on your game face, make up a sign, or just do anything to get the attentions of our cameras. And we just might see you on the Scoreboard Show. Take care and good night. <laughs>